All right. So up on the stage here, we've got Connor Armstrong Sam Fee. Sam Fee, yeah. Perfect. He is the director of the film you just saw. <laughs> In line, we've got Keelan Ryan. He is <laughs> apparently very popular. Yeah. Uh, That's just my mom there. So. <laughs> uh, he is a writer and one of the actors. And then we've got uh, Fiatch. Fiatch? Fiatch. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get the, you gotta get the <laughs> at the back. Fiatch. 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 Yeah, you get it there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that Irish? Mm. We'll edit that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he was one of the actors in the film. Lead actor. Uh, so I think the first question that's on everybody's mind, are you guys doing some kind of contest for beard growing? Is that, it's no. not November. What's <laughs> going on is there, there's a prequel, or sorry, a sequel uh -huh. to Lift now. It's um, the two of us, we just, took such a fondness to the first experience of the lift, so we've now <laughs> locked ourselves in the lift. And uh, we've been there for two months. There's, so that's yeah, there's no shaving apparatus or anything. <laughs> is that what it is? That's, yeah. That sounds good. Yeah, Am I directing this? No. No. Oh. <laughs> it's, not, it's not actually a film. We're just going to sit in the lift yeah. together. Just oh, well, yeah, okay. And slowly else. grow your beards yeah. and yeah. weave them together. Everything else will be shaved but the beards. Mm. Uh, all right, so I guess first question is, uh, what was the inspiration for the film? Like, what made you think, you know what would be exciting? A film that takes place in a lift. Um, yeah, that was... Um, well, uh, Connor wanted to make his first uh, feature film. He'd done a couple of shorts and stuff, and um, he put a thing out on Facebook looking for a writer, and I had met... I'd worked with Connor on a few things before, and I, I had just finished one writing project and wanted to start another one. Um, so we met up and went, went through a few ideas, and we kind of went away for a weekend and came back again, and we didn't quite find the right project. Connor was just flicking through an old black book of his and um, came across this thing he had written down saying, stuck in a lift. And uh, whatever way he said it just made me laugh, and I was thinking, that could make a good film. <laughs> and uh, so uh, went away, worked, um, said, yeah, let's, let, let's do it. It was that simple. He had, a, he had a, an idea, and um, I think I left his house by the time I got home. Um, kind of had the rough kind yep. of plot line worked out, and then we spent the next year or so kind of finessing the skip, uh, script and working on the script. That's how it happened. Was the intent to do a feature or a short? Or? Feature, always yeah. a feature, yeah. Always okay. a feature, yeah. And then uh, with that, how many drafts did you go through and like, what was the writing process like? I suppose it's probably six drafts, but I mean, it, the, 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 main, the, the main story was there from the first draft and uh, we just kind of went back and, you know, kind of worked on it together in terms of like, um, if anything didn't work, I kind of knew in my head it didn't work, but because it takes, it's so hard to write sometimes, you just want to, Kind of put it down on paper, and then Connor would might say, "Well, that, that's actually not that good. It's not as good as the rest." Of it. So, you go, <laughs> so you go back and and um, and just try to make it better. So, in that sense, just kind of key moments in it would be changed, okay. and we kind of called them different drafts. But um, yeah, I'd say about six. Okay, six great. Drafts, yeah. Yep. And then the the film's done pretty well. It's been in a few festivals here in Ireland and the U.S. and yeah, it screened in. Uh, the first festival was in Dunleary, Dave Burns Underground, which was great, and it won a uh, runner-up best feature film. Uh, thank you. Um, Should have been best. Yeah. Well, yeah. But anyway, uh, screened in Limerick, Cork. Then it got into a couple of American festivals uh, in Chicago and Maryland, and it screened in in Hastings in September. So yeah, it's done well. We're pleased. And uh, where is it going, Hastings? Anywhere else? Uh, Hastings is the only one at the moment, but we're kind of finished the festival circuit now. Mm -hmm. We're going to try and get the film actually out there. Actual proper yeah. distribution. Yeah, and stuff distribution, like that. distribution, exactly. That's great. Um, so we're exploring the various options at the moment. And then how did you find your cast and crew? How did you get everybody involved? Well, uh, Keelan, I was contractually obligated to give him a role. Okay. So th that was that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Stephen Gorman, who plays Mick, who is here somewhere, who's fantastic. Um, I, I, I had worked with Stephen, I think this was our fifth time working together. I met him on my grad film, and he had been in three plays, I think, I had done so. And he had worked with Keelan in my production of The Great Gatsby. 
So the two of them I knew would have the chemistry, so it was about building the other characters around the two lads. Yeah, I mean, it basically wrote the part for him as we, well. We, you know, we did, yeah. Like, um, okay. Yeah, just knew he'd nail it. I still made him audition, though. Three times. Three times, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was shit the first time, though. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, Fiat, how did you get involved? Did you audition? Did you know these guys? No, I didn't know them beforehand. Um, I saw a posting up online for mm -hmm. audition for a feature film. So as soon as a, uh, any sort of posting for a project goes live as an actor, it's immediately <laughs> in on it. And um, yeah, I got the sides for the script and I was like, fuck, lovely. And um, went along to the audition and then got more pages of the script and it was a lovely surprise because I think I was given the sides with the granddad for the audition, mm. which are obviously a bit more uh, dramatic, maybe. And I had no idea there was so much humor mm -hmm. in the scripts. And then when I got the chance to read the full thing, it was absolutely lovely. Nice. And then, um, yeah, it was a callback, which we had pretty much near enough, the full cast there. Yep. Yeah. And I got to run Riot, uh, pretending I was in the lift and just trying to terrorize people for a while. So yeah, it went well. Yeah, no, Fig was a real fine for us because that, that um, part, you know, it's a very, very difficult role, really, and especially for a young guy, you know, like Fig, yeah. you know, 24, when he, when he, at one point we were looking to maybe make the character a little bit older because we didn't think we'd get an actor that could kind of do everything he needed to do. And um, when Fig came in and read, I think we read, or maybe I, we saw like 100 people kind of uh, went for this part, it was crazy. Um, Painful. And, and um, you know, some good actors, but yeah, it's a long, long few days audition, and then Fia came in and just nailed it. And I may as well, you know, tell him now, like myself and Connor had a like, real kind of man crush on you for about two months or so. <laughs> <laughs> so happy Still with do. Like, Still know. do. Yeah, a little bit. Yep. Uh, especially that beard. But uh, <laughs> no, um, um, it, it, it was great. Such a dream boat. Look at that. <laughs> no. But, uh, no, we got to know him, of course. And yeah. He isn't actually the character. He's actually a normal person. But um, No, but what really impressed me was the callback. Uh, and we called it a callback. But I'll be honest now, it was the six people we wanted for the parts. We didn't tell them that. But it was, it was a chemistry check to, because it's very much an ensemble thing. Mm -hmm. And we had to make sure the chemistry between the six people was right. Now, I only gave them the script. I gave them the first lift scene, which is about 11 pages. I um, only gave it to them a couple of days beforehand. I said, don't bother trying to learn it. Uh, just you know, read, th read through it so you're comfortable with it. And Fia had learned the entire 11 pages. So, yeah. round of applause for Fia. Yeah. <laughs> Good <Here's your> job. <laughs> Um, uh, next question, and I think a uh, really important question, oh dear. is uh, the vomiting. How did you, was that, uh, like, how did that effect work? A uh, fake punch to Thomas in the yeah. stomach. Mm -hmm. no, uh, it, it was a long day in the lift, yeah. but it was 100% it was real. And so did you film in an actual lift? Did you film like a fake lift with removable walls? How did that work? Yeah, it, it was a fake, it was a, it was a set. It was okay. a set. And I'm delighted when people come up to me and say, where did you get the lift? Because mm -hmm. that means it looks real. So thank you. Um, yeah. um, but no, it was a, it was a very good set. Uh, we went through different variations. Um, there was a great day the day before filming. The set wouldn't fit into the fucking building. Uh, so we had, to, we had to heave it out. And we had like five people on the phone trying to get a different location. Uh, so that, yeah, that was fun. Um, but no, it was a set. And we did all those lift scenes in two days. Wow. Two days. Yeah. And I still have nightmares about those two days. <laughs> <laughs> How many hours during the two days? Like two Oh, uh, we stuck to twelve hours. Twelve hour yep, days? Twelve hour days, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's great. And then how long did the whole shoot take? Ten days. <laughs> okay. And uh, how how many times did you make a Fiat run back and forth around? Oh, don't and start, don't a start. lot. And he loved it. Yeah. Yeah. In fact we did a day of pickup shooting and Fig just rings me and he's like, I think we need more running scenes. Yeah, I've still been calling Connor actually yeah. to go for a jog, but no. Oh. Um, so I guess a uh, question, because this is a no budget indie film, like what was the actual budget? Like how did that work? Like where did that go? Uh, the budget inclusive of festivals, because you have to pay to submit to festivals, mm -hmm. and it could be upwards to 150 euro. Um, upwards of that, and then, uh, you know, marketing, post-production, it was about 30,000. Wow. Yeah. 
<laughs> but, but the thing is, the thing is, uh, how do you make a film on that amount of money? You spend it in the right areas. Yeah. So we bought, we rented the Ari Alexa, which is pretty much the best digital camera out there at the moment. So it looks like a film you would see in any other cinema, you know, with any other budget. So, uh, and then food, you know, that's another 2,000 euro, we have to feed people, you know. And the, the crew and the actors all worked for, you know, free. Wow. So, yeah, round of applause for them, yeah. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing, like, people don't realize, like, how quickly money goes on making a film. You think, yep. like, 30 grand, wow, I could make something great for that. But the reality is yeah. food, um, uh, ambulances and cop cars, like, how, um, or did you fake those? No, no, uh, there's a guy who rents uh, cars, uh, police cars, to Fair City. Mm -hmm. So, so um, we got in touch with Fair City and they gave us the number of the guy. Uh, I think that was 400 for the day. We knew things like that would, um, would add, like it's not that expensive, but it adds huge value to the... It adds production location. value, yeah. So you just try to be clever about it, those kind of things, the building, the caper building, you know, looks beautiful and, and people when they watch it, you just think, geez, that looks expensive because it's an expensive lobby, but they didn't charge us anything for it, you know, so you just got so to try to be clever about it, you know. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, when uh, you were uh, beating guys with the, the stuff, did, at any point did you accidentally hit anyone? Um, yeah, Alan down there will verify. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yes. so, I mean, like, like, so we had, um, we had like padding on, mm -hmm. but uh, you're meant to go, we had like a stunt coordinator in who was, you know, just, just kind of pull out from the contact when you're going down or whatever. It's like, no, cool, cool, yeah, cool. And obviously you get into the actor -y mode where you're like, it has to be real, it has to be fucking real. So you're just smacking him and poor Alan was... It's or after, I think. He was yeah. hobbling around, but the, yeah. it, the take is in the film, yeah. so that's all that's important. <laughs> that's <great. laughs> He's down there at the back. <laughs> um, okay, uh, also very important question. Why is it called Lift and not The Lift? The Lift. <laughs> oh, you have, you have stunned us into silence. <laughs> Just li li Lift because, is kind of a nice word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lift. So have any of you seen the film called The Lift? It's rubbish. Uh, uh, no, yeah. I see it on IMDb when I Google myself, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the wrong thing comes up. Like, no, 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 it's yeah. just lift. Okay. Well, I won't ask you any questions about the lift or anything like that. No. Um, does anyone in the audience have any questions for these guys? Uh, excellent. Oh, so excellent. I, uh, I saw your hand go up first. Go. Shoot. Uh, I get two, three. I'll, I got it. So, what was it like working with? Okay, hold on before you, yeah. I'm going to repeat yes. the question to make yeah. sure everybody's got it. So uh, the question is, what was it like to work with Dublin City Council uh, because they had the outdoor scenes where they had to kind of go around and do all that kind of stuff? Yeah, well, the guards were, were, were cool. I mean, that, that was um, one, of the, one of the most fun nights in a way because we had the road cornered off ourselves for a couple of hours, so we felt like such big shots, you know, those cops stopping cars God. going on either side you kind of own that road like and actually just for that shot of you yeah. walking into, <laughs> yeah. the, into the google building so that that felt cool we had one of uh mm. one of the actual people one of the actors dressed as a guard one of the when the guy start, started stopping traffic himself and <laughs> highly stop, illegal started telling yeah. us. there was an acdc concert yeah. on actually and um we've got people coming up to go up to the lads looking for directions and they're like oh you go down here and you go down there and then start attacking them and everything everybody's looking around like these you know guys attacking the cops but uh <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it Dub Dublin City Council were great. Uh, they're really supportive of filmmakers. Um, yeah, they were great. I would just ring Lynn in the office and say we need this street, and as long as we have insurance, good to go. Great. Yeah. Uh, okay, I saw a couple more hands. I think there's one up here. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Okay. So, uh, what was it like finding, working with, and uh, concentration of the child actress that was involved in the film? She, she was great. I, I knew her from before. I had cast her in a film that I produced uh, a couple of years ago. So I sort of had her in mind. Um, you know, we had a fun day when you know, all the little kids came in and read for the role. But the problem is, too many stage school people who are too theatrical. You know, And that's a real problem when it comes to film acting. And I do teach drama in stage schools and the problem is they only learn acting for stage and it's very different working on camera or working on stage 
So, uh, but this girl just comes in completely natural, and uh, I think you'll agree she was she was great. Yeah. yeah. So, a round of applause for Megan. Yeah. That's such a lovely girl. It, lovely it, girl. It's funny you met. It's, every time we do one of these things, someone singles her out, and, and it's great because a, a kid actor, they they are harder to come by. You know, uh, kind of good kid actors and. She's as, like, as lovely as she is on the, on the screen, she's a, as nice as a person as well, so really easy to work yeah. with. And what was her age? She she's was 12. 12 yeah. She's 12, yeah. So, and even like, you know, some of the kind of, some of the bad, the worst language, you know, <laughs> we're kind of a bit nervous yeah. about doing it around her, but, um, and we're kind of told her parents, it's okay if she... We can take her out. We can edit yeah. out and the folks are cool. It's like, no, 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 just fire away, you know. She, she, uh, <laughs> she loved it, like, she was, she was great. Were there like uh, rules around like the amount of time that she could work or anything like that, or was she pretty much available the whole time? Or she was just like any, uh, any other <laughs> anybody actors. else. Yeah, yeah. 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 She, and, and she drove from Donegal for each re rehearsal, so we, we rehearsed yeah, these scenes. Like yeah. because so much of a shot in the one kind of location, we kind of rehearsed it like a play. She lives up in Donegal, and she drove the four hours each kind of you know whenever we were doing her folk or dad drove her and. Yeah, she, I mean, she's a real pro. Nice. She's great. Did you guys spend a lot of time rehearsing then since you had just two days to kind of film the, the majority of, of the thing and then 10 days throughout the whole thing? We did. We, we, ran, we ran the scenes. Uh, we did a fair amount of rehearsal. Mm. Yeah. It's a balancing act, though. We, we wanted to rehearse. Don't want to over-rehearse. Yeah, so we, we, we wanted to have it that it's still kind of natural, but um, that was not so rehearsed that, that the actors don't enjoy it on screen anymore. So it, it, is, a, it is a tough kind of balance to get, you know, but... Um, yeah, but it, it kind of it kind of worked out. Just rehearsed kind of like a play, but not quite like a play. Okay. Do you know? Um, I, I there was an, uh, sorry. Uh, I see yours. There, I think there was one back there though. Earlier. Okay. Thirty. Thirty. Yeah. Three zero. Th three zero. Thanks, yeah. Patrick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but but you did make uh, some of it through. Uh, you did a funding campaign and a few other things, right? Yeah, we did a, a, an Indiegogo campaign, which is great, where people throw in fifty dollars, which is I think forty five euro, and they become a Lyft insider. So they got behind the scenes videos. There's probably a few in tonight. Uh, invitations to the screenings. They got to visit the set, and uh, between everyone, we raised about four thousand, which was great. Great. So thanks to them. All right, the, so the, the, the yep. question is, uh, where did you build the set and were the doors kind of part of it, or is that correct? Or were they shot separately? Mm -hmm. The set was built by, our, um, by uh, Naomi, who was our production designer uh, down in Leitrim. And then they were transported up the day before. Uh, probably should have been a couple of days before, but we only had the venue the day before. And as I think I said earlier, the set was so big and so sturdy which in one way is great, it's not going to fall apart, it wouldn't fit in the doors to the venue. And this is three o'clock the day before filming. Uh, sorry, I'm still angry about it. <laughs> yeah, sorry? Oh, sorry, it was the, um, the old fire station in Rathmines, which is now an art gallery. Um, so, you know, three o'clock, five of us on the phone trying to get a different venue. We eventually got somewhere about six o'clock um, out by the Three Lamps uh, Delight Studios, uh, which cost an arm and a leg, but we got it done. But okay. they were putting up the set till about two in the morning, so. Okay. And the doors were part of the set? The doors were, when they're trying to open the doors, yes. When they're moving, they're real doors that we shot on location. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully we... Uh... Very, very okay, good, thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, <laughs> Great I saw, sorry, I saw him. Uh, yeah, very good. So the question is, how much did you spend on insurance and equipment, and like, how did that break down? This is really interesting. We definitely have some filmmakers in the audience. <laughs> I've never, yeah, I've never got these sort of questions. It's, it's usually, uh, you know, about the actors or whatever. Um, uh, <laughs> 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 you may as well just sit down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He um, Sorry, filmmakers don't care about yeah. actors. Yeah, yeah. Um, the insurance. Uh, yeah, well, you need uh, you need two types of insurance: public liability. So if a public member comes and falls over a stand, they can't sue you, or the insurance would pay for that. And then you need employer's insurance for employing the actors. Um, so I, I, it's about a thousand euro for the 10 day shoot, but it's really done dependent on your budget. 
So it's not how long you shoot for, it's your budget. So on the budget I gave them, that was the price. And that was uh, for insurance alone? Insurance, yeah. And then, and then how but much you can't do it without it, you know. And then how much did you spend on equipment and that type of stuff? Equipment, the camera was, uh, was 4,000 plus VAT, so about 5,000. And then there are two, 3,000 on lighting equipment. So you have to put your hand up. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on, attack me out. You're going. Yeah. So, so okay. how did the, the rental work? Was it per hour, per, uh, yeah. This is very technical, this questionnaire. Down. Okay. Um, <laughs> the non-film people are probably bored out of their trees. Um, yeah, no? Okay. Um, yeah, next question. <laughs> I'll try and answer as quick as possible. Um, what, what was the question? <laughs> so uh, how, did, how did you burn through that uh, 4000 oh, okay. for like uh, the camera? And My that cameraman, stuff, Aiden, who I think did a great job, um, he had done some work for the guys who rented him the camera, so we got a discounted uh, amount for it. It should be a lot more. Uh, they, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Uh, okay. Sorry, I just to ask great I did. Uh, question. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Did yeah. anyone get stuck in a real lift? Yeah, uh, I did. Yeah. So how long were you stuck in it for, and how did you get out? Um... It wasn't actually that dramatic. We were, we were pretty drunk and there was about five of us and we were dancing up and down in it. And it was a friend's apartment, so we were there about 20 minutes. And I, didn't, I didn't have so a So you broke the lift. But we broke the lift. You broke yeah, the lift, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was straight, it was preparation. Yeah. Uh, perfect. I, I think I saw a couple other hands go up. Is that right? No? Yes. Yeah, somebody there? Yeah. All right, so the question was the, the backstory about Sean and Granddad, so I'm assuming uh, some of the writing uh, pulled from real life, is that right? Yeah, um, so Jared McSorley's character, the Granddad, yeah, he's played between them is, is, is a kind of word-for-word -word conversation I had with my own Granddad, so then the kind of flashback stuff where they talk to each other, the story about churning the, you know, the, the milk into butter and all that kind of stuff. Um, my grandma was actually he was dying at the time, and, and uh, I had heard those stories before, and I was in the middle of writing the film, and I, I already knew about this character, so um, that was going to base it on him. And then um, I just, I, he was literally on his, on his, on his deathbed, and I, and I recorded, I asked him, tell me that story about the milk and the butter thing again, and I recorded it, and tell me the story about how you met Granny, and recorded that, and it was the easiest bit of writing I ever did, because I literally just pressed play and just, just, just copied it, like, word for word. So, it was kind of cool. He had only just passed away, about, I think it was maybe two months. And the very first day, our very first day of shoot was uh, Fick and him out in the garden. And he's telling the story about how he met my granny. So it was kind of, it was kind of cool, you know, it was kind of, um, yeah, it was kind of emotional. And it was kind of surreal to see this kind of, you know, great actor, this actor that I kind of admired for, for years. And he's, he's, he's saying the words that my granddad literally said to me. So it was, it was kind of a nice moment in the, uh, for the whole shoot and continues the first day and stuff was kind of cool. So. All right, yeah. so the question is how did he get involved, uh, how was he to work with and has he seen the film? Well, we, 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 uh, we, so yeah, tell us the story about him. Yeah, we, um, we wanted kind of a, a named actor for, for that role, you know, just to, to add a bit of credibility to the film and stuff like that. But, you know they're kind of hard to get, but basically I we, we I wrote a I wrote a list of, uh, of 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 names of these kind of big, big Irish actors, and I I wrote something beside each one of them, and Jared McSorley's right at the top, and in brackets, and emailed McConnor, and right and in brackets, there's no no point in even emailing, you know, because we're not going to get them. And um, then my wife Carol just said when when we went came time to to start contacting these people, so well, you know, what do you got to lose? You know, why, why not kind of email them? So. Sent, uh, emailed the agent, and uh, the agent was, was, was kind of, that's the kind of first obstacle for the agent actually tell the actor, sometimes there's a mm. model project like this where he gets paid almost nothing, uh, they, they, um, they tend to not bother these guys with that, but uh, like, it was really weird, like three days later he got back, said he loved the script, he loved the character, and he, and he loved the, the kind of um, the, the background story, it was something that, that meant something to him, and it was that quick, like literally within the week he had said that he was going to do it, so... We couldn't believe it. And then, in terms of working with him, I would fear I could probably t tell you one or two things as well. But um, I loved him. I, he's, a, he's, 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 he's a bit mad, but he's brilliant. Like, uh, 
and yep. he's the best actor I've ever seen up close. Like we'd be t with the scenes in the pub, I'd just I'd be chatting to him and he'd tell me a mad story, oh, yeah. and they say, okay, time, time, to, time for uh, time for the shoot or you know time for action, and you just turn it off. Next thing you just roll into it, and if you just turn it on, and I, and I really learned so much from him as an actor watching him. Um, but Fieke, uh, the next time I'm going to write a part that I get to act opposite yeah. But uh, So Fieke oh, got the, to play opposite him. And, yeah, you know. no, what a dream. Like, what, a, what a complete treat. Like, this is a guy who pretty much acted Daniel Day-Lewis out of the scene in, in The Name of the Father. It's crazy, so getting to, getting to do it with him. There's no transition into when he's acting. That's the mark of a great actor. And we were rehearsing member in the Royal Marine yep. the night before the shoot. And uh, <laughs> Jerry, Jerry's like smoking a fag out the window, you know, and smoke inside hotels. But um, yeah, and then we're just kind of sort of just talking about running the lines, and then next thing we're still chatting, and then he's he's into the scene, and I'm, kind of, oh fuck, that's it, like this, it's just seamless, you know. We were just having a conversation. He went into the scene talking about the the churn butter and all that, and just I was like, fuck, and you have to bring your try, bring your game to that, then you know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, just, just answer his thir uh, third part of that question. Yes, he has seen the film. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he loved it, yeah. He loved it. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. You got an idea for a movie? <laughs> so, yeah, so, so uh, just make sure I'm getting it right. So if somebody came to them with like a, a, a story about their family, uh, it would they then potentially like put, take that story and put it into a movie? Yeah. Okay. Uh, writers? Yeah, you rule nothing out. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we're we're with funding. We're we're, we're, <laughs> we're filmmakers, and we lo we love stories, and we love telling stories. So if the story's right, of course, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a script? <laughs> <laughs> Are you offering? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll talk after. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Talk after. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, do we have any other questions? Uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, what's next? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then we'll get you. What's next for us or for the film? Both. Both. Yeah. Uh, we're we're okay. working on the next on the next uh, film. Um, it's it's kind of bigger in scope and it's it's taken a little longer to write. But um, yeah, we're 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 writing it at the moment and uh, well, I'm writing it, but yeah, we're kind of doing it together. Okay, um, so you um, found the collaborative process between the two of you, uh, you worked well together? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Next question, yeah, yeah, is someone down here, yeah. Uh, Fiuk, what are you working on? Um, I'm actually I'm producing a film, a feature of my own at the moment um, with a friend of mine. We, we were co-producing it together and I play the lead in that. And It's one we started three years ago and mm. we're in the latter stages of post-production at the moment, so that's kind of... That's taken up a lot of my time, but it's, it's very exciting. Nice. What's that called? It's called Blue Dawn. Blue Dawn. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, there was a hand. Yep. So the, the uh, question okay. is like, uh, more people want to see this movie. How, how, how can they see this? We, uh, we, we are exploring options at the moment. Like you said, Netflix, uh, those streaming platforms are great for these kind of films. Um, yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're looking at options at the moment. Uh, nothing to announce yet, but hopefully soon. Perfect. Um, and then, of course, every seat had a flyer on it. So yes. if you uh, go to their, follow them, of course, obviously, they'll throw it out there when they have more information on, yep. on the Follow the Facebook page and uh, the IMDb. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Uh, and were there any more questions? Oh, yeah. Oh, Sorry, oh, oh. You already asked a question. No. <laughs> uh, so the question was, did you shoot in 4K since you had the, uh, the camera, and was that difficult to work with? I, I'm liking these technical questions. Um, we shot in 2K. Um, you know, it's funny, uh, directors, you know, you know, saying to me, uh, if I talk to them, oh, we're shooting our film in 4K or 6K, well, cinemas can only project 2K, so, you know, uh, there's no point. You'd have to downgrade it to 2K anyway. So it was uh, 2K. Yeah. Uh, 
Any last questions before we uh, kind of wrap it up? Any more technical questions? Yeah. Well, I think uh, since we do have, uh, sorry, was the, you just nice. scratching. He's scratching. <laughs> Anna works. Oh, okay. Go ahead. No. Oh, yes. No. 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 <laughs> I think so, too. Sequel. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. 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 So the, the question was, did they ever get a date? And apparently, no. 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 The, but, the question, but the question is, did, uh, on Monday, did he ask her? I don't think he did. No. 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 All right. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, go ahead. So some of the other actors are also here, but at the back. Yeah. They are, yes. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I, I have one more question for the three of these guys. We'll get them up and then, uh, actually, no, we'll get them up now and then I'll ask the question to all of them. How about that? Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Come on up. <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> Um, I loved it. Yeah, it, it was great. It was great. 
Yeah, uh, work work with people um, that you you can have a good collaboration with. I think a really important thing is when you don't have a um, when you have very little budget, get great actors, get good actors. All these guys were fantastic. Like. Um, and they just elevated what was on the page so much. Um, each and every one, the, the six, and then and, uh, the, the Alan and the, the other guys that are outside, every single one of them were, were brilliant. And that took time for me kind of to find those people then. But that ups the production value of it, you know? And because again, just as an audience, you know, you know, all of a sudden the bad actor walks in, you go, oh yeah, that's right, I'm watching a cheap film with no money. But all the actors are good, that really just enhances the film, and, and these guys just, they, they put everything into it. And, and I'm doing it myself. You know, I, I'm, 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 all right. Uh, anybody else have anything? Uh, just, just do it. D don't make excuses. Um, I would say, y you know, um, technology these days, cameras are cheaper. Um, everybody, everybody in this room pretty much has a camera in their pocket, on their iPhones. And films can be shot on iPhones now. Um, the quality is amazing. So, it, you know, it, there's more opportunities for people now to make films. Um, I will reiterate, yes, get good actors, a good crew. Um, and spend some money, because I had one director who I won't name, but wanted me to produce his film. And I asked, my first question was, what's your budget? And he thought, and he was like, oh, I'm going to do it on 600 euro or something. And I was like, no! Um, <laughs> you know, um, no, you need, you need a certain amount of money, you know, but spend it in the right areas. Um, and yeah, fantastic actors.
everybody just completely trusted each other and, and completely trusted that you know our director was going to do the best for us as actors and our our, our co-actors were, were going to give as much as they could give so you know really it's just about trust and belief so yeah. <laughs> Thanks a million for uh, coming out. Thank you. Everybody.